Hi guys, I'm here at Oslo in London with the one and only Mr. Sam Outlaw. So it's good to see you again, bud. Good to see you. Welcome back to London. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the confusingly named yeah, Oslo strange, Club in London. Yeah. Yeah. That's strange. You brought the Californian weather with you today. It's, yeah. uh, it's nice out there. Yeah, the, the sun the sun is out and uh, we're getting a, a nice nice vibe in England for sure. You've, you've kind of made London your second home now, haven't you? You seem yeah. to come here an awful lot, so what is it that keeps bringing you back? Um, I wish I knew. I'm always like, why, why do you all want me coming back to London again? But um, I don't know. So, yeah, I was here a couple of months ago for the UK Americana Awards, and before that, you know, last fall, and then I think before that, right around my birthday in July, and before that, it was in, I want to say April. So, yeah, man, we've been, we've been out here a lot, and... I mean, I guess it has to be that, for whatever reason, uh, the folks here have connected with the music, and so it's my honor and pleasure to get to come out here and perform. And you've got Leo and Andy with you this trip, haven't you? So they're enjoying it? Yeah, they're having a great time. Unlike me, I'm getting, you know, dragged around, uh, you know, doing uh, press and, and, you know, performance, little performance things, but uh, Andy and Leo are having a blast. They're at the, uh, they're at the, you know, the Westminster Abbey Church today, did a tour, and they're, so they're having fun. How did Leo adapt to the uh, the jet lag, the uh, struggling? Or? Yeah, like I, I, we've never taken him this far away before, so I had no idea how he was going to handle it. But um, I think it was like a couple nights ago, the kid slept for like 14 hours straight or something. Wow. So he's handling a lot, heck of a lot better than I am. Yeah. How was the first 10 months of fatherhood been for you? For you? It's oh, been a life changing experience. Yeah. yeah. I mean, life changing, but I mean, completely in a good way. It's been the most exciting and happy and joy filled experience of my life. And obviously, I only just wish I could have been around a little more, especially when it was real, real little. Because um, I think I took only just like a month off and then I had to leave and come back and leave and come back. Um, so it's been nice to be actually home for the last three months and to get to really connect with him and to get to really kind of just be a dad at home. So it's been really fun. How does it change your kind of artistry and your songwriting being a father? Because it must give you a totally different perception on life, must not it, being a father? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes, you know, the stakes kind of feel a little higher. Like, you want to, you wanna, you know, make enough dough to take care of your... Like, it's one thing to ask yourself to suffer for your own art, but it's different to ask, you know, your wife and baby. So, um, but I, yeah, I, I'm taking a lot of time to digest fatherhood. Like, I'm not going to have, like, the, the whole next album's not going to be about being a dad or some crap like that. Um, but, but that said, I mean, you know, I've touched upon some of these, um, some of these things in the new album, Tenderheart, and, you know, I think I'll continue to, as it feels natural, to bring this new kind of part of my life out into the, the songs. And like you mentioned last time you were here, you went to the AMA Awards, and yeah. you won International Album of the Year. Yes. I mean, every artist says, oh, we didn't expect to win, but I think you were genuinely mm -hmm. shocked by that. Well, yeah, because I was up against the Margot Price record, which was like a big breakout success that year, and the new Sturgill Simpson record. So, you know, and that, that, was, nom that, that not was nominated and won a Grammy, you know, in the U.S. So I was definitely surprised to win, um, but obviously it was a pleasant surprise. I wish I would have been a little more prepared for my, my acceptance speech. I feel like I kind of, you know, I don't know, just blurted out a few names and ran off stage, but yeah, man, that was a really that was a really uh, exciting night, and it was obviously an honor. I mean, to get uh, to get recognized like that is very nice. And on the last album, you worked with Roy Cuda yeah. on the production side of things, but this time you've done it kind of yourself, haven't you? Yeah. So that must have been a tough challenge to kind of follow what Roy did on the previous album. Yeah, I think to some extent I figured, you know, no one was going to want to follow up a Ry Cooter produced record. No one else would, so I might as well just do it myself. Um, and I think, yeah, man, it was, uh, I think I, I kind of went into it a little laid back saying, well, if we start it and whatever we end up with, if we don't like it, we'll just not release it. And I'll go have to find a producer and we'll just, you know, start over. Uh, but I think right away we started feeling like it was going good. The vibes in the house were good. And we weren't even in like a fancy studio or anything. We were just set up in in the engineer Martin Pradler's living room um, and he co-produced it with me and I think he did a really tremendous job of helping the songs you know come out and uh, in their own special way so uh, you know I was I was a little unsure of what I'd be able to do um, on my own but I, f I feel happy with the end result for sure like I said in my review a few days ago, what I love about the album is the diversity of it because you've got yeah. the very emotional Bogan Veer, I think, yeah. look at you now, mm -hmm. but you've also got the very fun side, the trouble mm -hmm. and all my life, drying yeah. the sun. So yeah. is that an important thing for you to be kind of not be pigeonholed when you're making an album? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I call myself a country singer, um, which naturally for some people means only this very specific certain set amount of things, and they want their country music the way they want it. But, um, you know, I also started, you know, when I started calling what I was doing SoCal Country, part of the idea is that I'm bringing in other influences, and there's rock and soft rock and singer-songwriter tradition. Um, there's all that stuff that I grew up with that I really love. So you're right, I mean, I never want to make a record, I think, where every song sounds the same. Um, and I think we got lucky in the way that we sequenced Tenderheart that it feels like it kind of flows together. So I didn't set off though knowing if that was going to be the case. I just started recording songs. And we decided to just do each song, you know, for what, I mean, we produced each song for whatever worked for the song, whether it made sense, you know, compared to another song or not. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, um, that, that will always be important to me to make sure that I'm making albums that I like whether other people will accept it or not and to always make sure that, um, yeah, we, we're, we're mixing it up, you know, mixing it up. And tell us about the Trouble music video that you've been working on because it looked like a pretty fun cops and robbers yeah. kind of thing. So basically my, my rules these days, my number one rule for a music video is I don't want to be in it. <laughs> um, but if I have to be in it, I want to be in it as little as possible. So I, I, do, um, I do have a, a brief uh, appearance at the end of the video but, um, you know, the song is, you know, it's obviously kind of about temptation in all its forms. Um, but the most obvious form is a beautiful young woman. <laughs> so we cast uh, this really great gal named uh, Roxy Dunlop in the lead. And we shot most of her stuff um, out in the desert. So the storyline is kind of, she's on this, uh, she's on her way to a Sam Outlaw show. But she's kind of like um, picking off these dudes along the way. These vic <laughs> you know, she's, she's taking her victims along the way. And then she shows up. Uh, to the show and it, it seems that maybe I'm going to be her final victim. So it was just fun, it's just kind of a genre pop video to go along with a very straight ahead kind of pop song. We can always rely on you to give us a good music video because I know the, the cry for me videos are oh, always yeah. going to be a personal favourite of mine. That, yeah, so. I mean, that's just such a weird video and I still, I still love the fact that people didn't get that we were trying to <laughs> portray a very fake horse. <laughs> so yeah man, I, you know, the thing with videos is you, you come up with good ideas but oftentimes there's no money. So um, this time, fortunately, like this video, and even with Angelino, we had a little bit of dough to work with, so you felt like you could kind of, you know, give a little bit of a storyline and, and maybe even hire some proper, you know, people to work on it. So uh, this guy, Chris Phelps, made this new video, and I saw the latest cut of it today, and I think it's super awesome. So I'm excited. When's it going to come out? Uh, soon. I think we're shooting to have it out a few days before the album comes out. So less than a couple weeks from now. Yeah. And just finally, tell us about Bottomless Mimosas, because yeah. that was released a couple of days ago, and yeah. it's probably my favorite on the album, my cool. personal favorite. So tell us about that track. I mean, it's my, one of my favorites, too. Um, so I, I, I realize that not everyone know, knows what Bottomless Mimosas means, but basically this is, you know, very much a part of, like, brunch culture, and specifically, like, L.A., kind of, you know, you're out in West Hollywood, and there's all these beautiful cafes and restaurants, and often outside of these shop, you know, restaurants, there'll be s like little signs that say like, come in for brunch, it's this set price, and it includes bottomless mimosas, which just means, you know, your champagne mixed with orange juice and like a champagne flute, and they'll refill it as you go. So as you, you know, uh, and it's basically my way of kind of poking fun at that a little bit, and also in a non-judgmental way, um, kind of like laughing a little bit at, you know, the pathetic nature of all these hungover people, you know, that were out partying the night before, coming in for their late breakfast slash early lunch and uh, trying to uh, trying to medicate and uh, and maybe have to come to terms with the mistakes they've made or, or whatever. So I like the tune though because it's mellow. It's obviously more of kind of a rock song. My buddy Danny, I thought, played some beautiful um, guitar in it. And then Bo Coster from My Morning Jacket plays these really, he played one Rhodes piano part and then doubled it with like a, another Rhodes part that had a whole bunch of reverb, this really cool reverb thing. So I think the I think that one's a really distinct sounding tune. And uh, yeah, I'm glad people are liking it. Right, so I'm gonna love it. Um, so what can we expect from the show tonight? Because I know you got a full band, so. I don't, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> um, I, so I played with these guys for the after party we did after the AMA awards thing, but that was a covers night, you know. It was just oh. So um, I've never played my songs with these guys. I'm about to go rehearse them right now so for the first time. Into the unknown for this one. Yeah. So I think you know, but we'll we'll definitely mix it up. We'll do songs from Angelino. We'll do new songs from Tenderheart. Um, I've got my singer Molly with me, you know, my right hand person. So we'll probably throw in some kind of acoustic things where it's just me and her. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. We're looking forward to it. Find out. <laughs> yeah. well, Sam, best of luck with the new album release, and uh, we can't wait to see you tonight. Thanks it's going to so be awesome. Thank you. Awesome, Sam. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Cheers, it. Cheers, mate. Cool.